Earwig and the Witch is directed by Goro Miyazaki, who brought us Tales from Earthsea and from Up on Poppy Hill. This is the latest film from Studio Ghibli. It's currently out in theaters and HBO Max. The film opens with a girl named Earwig, whose orphanage has renamed her Erica, and she enjoys life there. She doesn't want to be adopted. In fact, she fights to not be. But when she is taken in by a witch and an entity called the Mandrake, she gets a rude awakening when she realizes she's only been adopted to be an extra set of hands for this witch who needs help cast spells. As has been widely discussed by many animation fans, this is Studio Ghibli's first attempt at a fully CG animated feature film. It's not that they're going to continue with this model. Hayao Miyazaki is currently working on what is reportedly once again his final film, and this is apparently going to be a hand-drawn film, so this is not like the end of an era necessarily for animation. But given Studio Ghibli's immaculate track record, I was obviously very interested to see what they would do with this new animation style for their studio. And according to the research I've done, Goro Miyazaki had to lead a whole new team, that this studio wasn't exactly used to this type of animation, and it was a bit of a trial and error process. It would be very easy for me to spend the majority of this review just talking about the animation style, because I'm always going to appreciate hand-drawn animation. We get so much CG animation nowadays that it's essentially the standard. For a first try, I don't think this is embarrassing, but it's certainly not on the level of pretty much every major animation studio that's in the industry. And it's definitely not on the level of what Studio Ghibli is capable of when it comes to hand-drawn animation. But I'm going to stop talking about that now, because there's enough debate about that. There's enough people talking about that. I'm going to talk about the story. Except for The Cat Returns and Ocean Waves, this is Studio Ghibli's, I believe, third shortest film. It's 82 minutes long, and that includes the ending credits as well as an extended opening credits. So it's really more of a 75 minute movie. And over the course of that narrative, nothing much happens. There's an intriguing setup. A witch is carrying a baby on a motorcycle. She uses a string of her hair to create a bunch of worms that blocks the sight of a car that's chasing her with a grill that opens up revealing a bunch of metal teeth. She drops the baby off at this orphanage and flees. Once Earwig, or as she has become known, Erica is adopted, she begins to help this witch with a bunch of spells for the entire movie. That's unfortunately all this movie is about. In regards to stakes, she is often threatened with being infested with worms by the witch if she doesn't do the chores properly, and that's really all she has to be concerned about. The mystery that's set up in the opening with this witch, the car, and dropping the baby at an orphanage is barely explored. Earwig has a cassette tape with a song. You learn a little bit about that, but it's wiped away so quickly, and without getting into any spoilers, the ending of the film, literally the final shot, feels like the movie is beginning. It seems like the end of the second act and the start of the third, but it's the end of the whole movie. As a protagonist, Earwig is kind of insufferable. She's purposefully unlikable. Her goal at the orphanage is to get everyone to do what she wants them to do. She's manipulative of the workers there, and when she's leaving, she doesn't even say goodbye to her best friend Custard and then spends the rest of the movie missing him and wondering if she'll ever see him again. And I just kept thinking, you didn't even bother saying goodbye to him. Why do you care that much about him? Once she moves in with the witch and this character, the Mandrake, her motivation doesn't shift at all. She just wants them to do whatever she tells them to do. And of course they don't. So her entire goal as a character becomes figuring out how to do spells so that she can get these two people to serve her. And that's her entire motivation in the film. There's very little stakes and very little character goals, and so it's hard to get invested in the story or the characters. And I know this is based off a of previous work, but it feels like an odd choice to make this be their first CG rendered film because almost the entire film takes place inside this one house. It feels strangely limited in scope, not just for a Ghibli film, but for a movie where you can render just about any environment that you might want to render, to have it be only in a house and a select few rooms feels so much smaller than it could be. Clearly a lot of work and effort went into this movie when it comes to trying out something new. Unfortunately, very little of that seems to have went into the script. As a story, it feels very familiar to other things Studio Ghibli has done. A young girl who's learning about witchcraft, there's a black cat. But what is so different about it is that I didn't care about a single character in the movie, nor did I feel emotional about any development that may have happened. The closest the movie got to actually investing me was a backstory that is explored in 
two or three flashbacks and then hinted at at the very ending, and you barely learn anything about it. It feels like a movie in which nobody really did anything of importance. It's unfortunately my least favorite Ghibli film, and this is coming from someone who owns every single Ghibli Blu-ray. I'm a humongous fan of this studio, and I think this might actually be their first release that I really don't care to own. I'm gonna give Earwig and the Witch a C-. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to more reviews very soon, and if you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.